Did you notice the FPS in my last devlog was really bad? Well, let's see if I can fix it. Okay, so the first thing I thought about with the optimization was the lighting that I just recently added before that devlog. But um, turns out when I replace it with the default lighting, it's pretty much the same frame rate. So that wasn't the issue. Um, I did a little bit of optimization to it. Um, like I've removed lumen completely. I've also made um, the, uh, the reflection method um, to none. Um, it was actually, um, I'll put it on screen space, but I think that um, having it on none is a little bit more optimized. I've done um, a bit of settings to optimize the lighting and that, but I sort of ran out of options. And the, the next thing I thought of was um, my blueprint optimization. So um, I've been sort of throwing together all these blueprints to, to sort of get it working and that. And what I've been doing is I've, tr I've kept them all, um, everything that I've added, I've kept them in actor components, uh, sort of separate from ATPS, so I can just attach them to ATPS. TPS uh, character and essentially with those components what I'm doing is I'm attaching it to the character and then inside those components I'm in most case cases ha having to cast back to the base character um, to set and get values so what I've done is I've converted all of those um, all there was there was heaps of components I've converted all of them over um, in into the main uh, blueprint now so when I go here this is uh, all, all the component code here pretty much so now instead of you know um, casting to the character and then getting values I've got all the values I want inside this character so what I've done pretty much is I've converted all, all the components over and I've also optimized everything I've removed every single cast I could think of uh, le let me show you um, an example what I've done uh, with um, like these location triggers where um, you know um, pawns overlap I can show you probably the safe zone trigger so um, I've done a little trick uh, to prevent any casting because um, really the only thing that I need is like alert components um, I, I just need to sort of send uh, you know send them alert components but with the actor what I do is obviously I do a server check that only um, I, I think this gets called multiple times you know for the server then for the player and then for the controller I think so this sort of um, limits the amount of times this gets called and then um, what I do is I add a tag to the actual character um, I'll show you here so tag and down the bottom here you'll see that there's a player tag so I, I just check if the actor has a tag and then that sort of narrows it down so I know it's the actual player and then I can actually get the component from the actor uh, using get component from class and then get get the contr control opponent and uh, use use the alert system so it's pretty much as simple as that this here if you're wondering what that is in some cases I think it was this case um, because it's the safe zone trigger and you spawn inside the safe zone trigger this gets called before this uh, exists so I just delay until next tick until it exists and then it works fine so those are the ways I sort of eliminated all the casting but uh, let me jump in game and show you uh, what the frame rate is now there is another major thing that I need to do um, but I'm yet to do that but I'll show you that in a second so let's jump in and see what the frame rate's like okay so as you can see um, it, it, it's it's a little bit better than it was it's about 25 uh, 30 frames per second but as you can see once I start moving around it will sort of drop down a bit so um, it has increased slightly I've also turned off motion blur so everything's a lot more responsive but um, let me run over to here so uh, actually well there is zombies so when I get close to zombies obviously the frame drops down a bit so as you can see the, br the blueprints done a little bit because um, I have removed a lot of tick I've removed the smart cover system which was uh, very heavy on, on tick so I have re removed some of that. So um, we need to look into uh, what is uh, what else we can do, and you're pretty much looking at them right now, and it's the zombies. So pretty much um, what I need to do with the zombies, as you can see, is uh, uh, well for starters, the zombie system was thrown together, just like everything else. I haven't optimized this yet, um, but the the zombie system is pretty much the problem is is uh, that they're all running char character movement components. This may be an issue, they're more having um, navigation invokers, but that needs to be done for large open worlds. But apparently I've been reading up that ha having heaps of uh, character movement comp components is pretty much the issue uh, sort of thing. Because I'll show, you, um, I'll show you what I mean actually, because when I go down to here, uh, actually I've got to go to here, I've got to go to the spawn. So if I sort of... 
this is an old backup but what, what I haven't actually done this yet so I'll do it now pretty much what I'll do I can pretty much disable zombies like this and I'll show you the, the frame difference just by disabling zombies so what I'll do is I'll promote that to a variable and call that zombies enabled and that should be true by false so you you're actually going to see um, a major difference I'll actually put it up on screen what what the frame rate was right now uh, so now essentially we can disable the zombies and now let's let's check the the frame rate difference okay so straight away uh you can see that we're starting to uh lean into the green so now it's sort of averaging 25 to 30 frames a second so that's about a 10 frame uh a 10 fps jump sort of thing so as you can see the zombies were a very large part of the frame rate drop i think 30 frames per second is pretty good for the editor um, you know, I think 40 is probably what you'll get max. So 40 FPS in the editor, I believe, will be about, you know, 60 plus. Because I, I heard that, um, you know, once you build your game, the FPS increases uh, massively. So um, what I need to do now is I need to optimize the zombies. So uh, I'll let you know how I go with that. Okay, so what I've done with the zombie system so far is I removed the navigation invokers because um, they don't really need it and apparently they're not really good when they're on multiple um, AI but what I've done also is I've removed the AI perception and replaced it with pawn sensing because apparently AI perception is very uh, you know resource heavy or it's not really good and it's better off um, using pawn sensing there is limitations to it uh, but as you can see here I have to make um, a losing site logic um, so pretty much when they see see the player it will set the um, the uh, target actor and the target location inside the behavior tree for it to chase the player and then what I do is um, every time it's sensing because this will sense every um, half a second so two, two times a second that sensing so what I'm doing is a sequence and then every time if they're still sensing a player I'll do a retriggerable delay and I'll wait five seconds so um, after these five seconds if they can no longer see the player um, I sort of reset it and uh, remove the target actor and that, that's sort of a way to sort of having a lose sense because there is no lose sense uh, sort of logic here I've also added um, the hearing sense as well because um, it will investigate locations so this is the last known location so it will actually investigate the last known location if it hears something before roaming around sort of, sort of thing and when it sees a player it will actually attack the player but uh, the main thing is uh, uh, let's jump in game and see how the FPS changed. Okay, so you may have noticed that the FPS is slightly better. We're actually sitting in, um, tw the, the, you know, the orange uh, 20 FPS. It sort of it will drop down below uh, 20 FPS, but um, it sort of averages around 25 FPS, uh, which is a lot better than it actually was. Um, with these optimizations, it, it it has changed it a little bit, um, but there is um, something else I need to do. Uh, this is not not good enough sort of thing um i've been learning with um ai having a lot of ai in the world because there's eventually going to be hundreds of zombies in the world um having a lot of ai um sort of operating on you know character movement and all that sort of stuff is it, not is not very good it's sort of you know resource hungry so what i need to do is i need to uh figure out a way to sort of disable zombies that are not within the player and the way i'm thinking about doing that is sort of putting um like like a, a collision around the player sort of like a trigger volume around the player which will be around each player and so um when the player gets sort of within range of um you know within range of the player like or within range of a zombie then the zombies will activate so essentially when um you know the there's zombies just roaming around doing nothing and there's no players nearby um i'm actually going to deactivate them uh, like apparently when you do that that's what that's sort of how you're meant to optimize ai so um i'm going to jump into that and uh see how i go so what i'm thinking is like a big you know a big uh you know a big volume around the player and then and when it whenever a zombie sort of overlaps that player it will sort of activate and when it sort of ends the overlap it will deactivate so uh let's see how i go with that
Okay guys, so I've made some great progress with optimizing the zombie system. So pretty much what I've done is I've actually created a, a sphere collision at, uh, around each player. So pretty much um, the way it works is uh, when they spawn, I'm actually stopping their logic. I'm using um, this brain component which is inside the controller. So uh, when they spawn, uh, they won't really be doing anything. It sort of prevents their, their behavior tree from running. Um, but when they actually um, enter this sphere, as you can see here, I've, I've got... Um, you know, overlap, um, begin overlap and end overlap events. And this is actually where I actually start the logic and also uh, stop the logic as well. So what I'll do is I'll jump in game and I'll show you how it works. And you're actually going to see a massive increase in FPS. Okay, so you can see my FPS on the right there. Um, as you can see, we're in the green now. So it's at least an extra 10 FPS, uh, even up to 15 FPS, I would argue, um, than it was before, um, before I'd done any of these optimizations. But what I'll do is I'll run a bit closer. Uh, so pretty much all the zombies uh, that are around are deactivated. And as you can see, you can see the zombie there. Um, but when I get close to him, he'll actually activate. So there you go. So he's been activated. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll run. And uh, there you go. I got further enough away. He's actually... Um, Actually, I've got to run a bit further. There is a bug with the sounds. Um, I'm, I haven't done the sound logic. That's why you can't hear him yet. But there will be a period uh, where he will... There you go. He's actually stopped. So there he is right there. You can see him. And uh, that's pretty much what happens. So um, the, the, it sort of saves a lot, of, um, a lot of resources. As you can see by the FPS, we're actually averaging about 30 FPS now, which is uh, pretty much double what we're aver averaging before. But there is still more optimizations to go. There's, there's a few bugs uh, with, with, with this system, um, with, with, with this uh, zombie um, sphere system, like the, the triggering and, and uh, like turning on and turning off and that. But anyway, guys, uh, that's where we are for this video. I thought I'd uh, put a video together just so you can uh, see my journey from start to finish. But here we are, guys, 30 FPS on average.